start, everybody. Um, this is the, the Deploying HRSA Telehealth Center of Excellence case nationwide. So as I want to get into this, I just want to give hey. a little background. Um, so oh, over Six. the last decade, a hey. hundred yeah. hospitals, One. Six. rural hospitals, have closed throughout the country. Another 400 are considered high risk, categories high risk for closing due to various financial yeah, strains. Um, these, right these closures will continue to widen the healthcare disparity gap in, in our country. And while there's no you know, one single magic pill that can cure this epidemic, um, there is a movement in South Carolina of competing organizations coming together under a shared vision and shared goals of how to transform the way healthcare is delivered in South Carolina. And <clears throat> so before I go into that, all right, before I go into that, and I just want to give a little bit of context in regards to before we can engage our panelists. So MUSC has been providing telehealth for over a decade ago, really started with clinical champions uh, doing you know, grassroots type of initiatives to address some of the healthcare disparities around maternal fetal health and, and stroke care. Uh, but in 2013, the state made a significant investment through MUSC, the Medical University of South Carolina, to one, create telehealth services that meet the needs of our, uh, of our communities, sustainable telehealth services that do that. And two, create a statewide collaborative that would bring um, you know, multiple stakeholders together under a shared vision and shared goals. So through that, um, the MUSC Center for Telehealth was created, bringing these services together under that mission statement of telehealth for efficient and effective care. And then also in 2014, within a year later, we established the South Carolina Telehealth Alliance as the statewide collaborative. So background on that, at MUSC, through robust enterprise adoption of telehealth service development, MUSC created what is now known as the Telehealth Service Implementation Model, also known as TSIM. This is a structured framework in regards to how to take a telehealth idea through development and through a common architecture to develop sustainable telehealth services. This contributed to over 80 unique telehealth services being developed at MUSC. <clears throat> and in 2017, uh, MUSC was recognized and entered into a cooperative agreement with HRSA and was designated a National Telehealth Center of Excellence. What that means is telehealth is happening uh, every day, all the time in South Carolina. Um, and earlier this spring, the SCTA was recognized by the American Telemedicine Association at, with their President's Award for uh, you know, our efforts, collaborative efforts, in transforming the way uh, healthcare is delivered in South Carolina. So with that, we'll start to get into our panelists. I'm joined here by Dr. Catherine Cristaldi and Ryan Cruz that represent both MUSC uh, and the SCTA. So, Dr. Cristaldi, well, maybe we'll start with you. Can you give like, us a little bit more background about the, the vision of telehealth in South Carolina and how that's evolved with the SCTA? Sure, sure. Thank you, Sean. So, um, the, the thought really in South Carolina was that the mission of widespread telehealth adoption um, and implementation would help, help combat healthcare disparities in our particularly rural state. Um, and so that's really been the driving force that was um, really what uh, inspired um, physicians to, to start the grassroots efforts in their individual service lines, um, was really uh, a, a need to reach patients who otherwise did not have access to care. Now what that's meant is in order to be good stewards of, of the state's funding um, to support these efforts uh, is that we've all had to work together. That means traditionally competing hospital systems in the state had to come together around a common table and say, how do we want to get this work done together? And, and how, in what way could we do it that would be the most efficient um, and the best for our patients and the citizens of South Carolina? Uh, it became very clear very early on that that would revolve around care provided as locally as possible, but always backed up by uh, the larger healthcare systems as needed. And um, that kind of uh, network of care 
um, necessitated what we became, uh, what we came to call an open access network. So um, the way that you know traditionally healthcare industry has driven technology is in a closed silo with um, technology that was not necessarily interoperable. Um, and it became very clear that if we were going to all work together in the state to serve patients, um, that we would have to be committed to technology that was op open access or, or interoperable. Um, and so we spent a lot of time over the last really decade thinking about the stages of maturity of that open access network um, and how we moved from just uh, establishing standards from our technology to really collaborative models of care that use that, that techno technological framework. Um, so th those have been you know, the major themes. How can we get together? How can we collaborate and uh, use really open access okay. technology to best serve our patients? Yeah, and so Brian, if you think about that level of coordination and communication, because uh, that's unique for all, all these stakeholders mm -hmm. coming across the, uh, you know, the state competing systems to be able to do that. What, what do you feel like were some of the key steps to be able to operationalize that vision? Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, you know, like, like Katie said, the bringing together diverse stakeholders, competing health systems, it, you know, to create a common vision. In order to do that, we really needed an organizational structure that kind of allowed folks to come to the table on a regular basis and that, you know, allowed us to, you know, when bringing together these diverse stakeholders, come to a common vision that both um, allowed us to move in the same direction but also allowed for these um, individual health systems and, and partners to kind of also follow some of their own priorities as well, um, while at the same time putting guardrails. Like, like um, Katie said, we had to be stewards of the funds, so we wanted to make sure that the funds led us in that common direction. So one of the ways that we really have been able to do this and keep coming together is through our annual collaborative strategic planning process. Um, so it's actually happening right now. Every fall, um, we pull together different leaders from all of the different health systems participating in the South Carolina Telehealth Alliance, our Department of Mental Health, um, and some of our, um, our partners that work in broadband. We bring all of our different leaders in the state together. Um, sometimes it's up to like 70 or 80 different individuals representing over 40 organizations. Have different work groups, different strategy sessions, and we map out what we plan to do together in the year ahead. Um, and, and the way that we've structured it um, in, in recent years, we've, we've got eight different strategies. And so obviously there's a lot of energy that's going into developing those clinical services that are gonna reach um, kind of our rural communities and address healthcare disparities. So our big health systems are, are, are working on that, but we also acknowledge that in order to really increase adoption in the state, we needed to have some strategies that kind of change the culture and, and change the infrastructure in South Carolina to make it amenable to telehealth adoption. So we have a whole strategy focused on expanding broadband into rural communities. We can't get the clinical services out there if we don't don't have broadband in those communities. We have a group working on telehealth education, making sure that our providers and our healthcare trainees understand telehealth, understand what it means to you know, be telehealth practitioners. Um, we've got a group working on promotion to make sure our general pub public feels and our patients feel comfortable using this, know that telehealth means just as good of care um, as seeing their provider in office, um, and then have, have groups working on sustainability and reimbursement. So there's lots of different arms um, and going to this open access discussion, early on we, we brought together kind of IT leadership to kind of really map out what does this mean in South Carolina and, and giving definitions to what our open access standards were, which then allowed us when it, when it came to our funding to be able to write into our contracts, you know, if you're gonna use the state dollars to, to go towards um, equipment, it's gotta be open access. We gotta be a part of this common vision. And also, you know, you, we, when, when we give out funding to um, different partners, you've got to participate in this annual um, strategic planning process. Um, and, and then the last thing I'd note is that, um, that it, accountability is, has been really key and critical to this as well. Um, so like I said, every year we map out key deliverables for the year ahead. Um, but then on a quarterly basis, we, we have all of our community partners um, 
report what progress they're making on those deliverables. And then we, in turn, hand that over to the state and, and create quarterly um, reports to the state on how we're doing on our strategic plan. Again, all of this helping us move in the same direction and, and work towards that common vision. So Dr. Bristol, it's obviously a lot of planning, again, coordination. As a clinician, from your perspective, what do you feel all, all that planning, like how that impacts your patients and, and the work that you're doing? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I, I think for a lot of people, an annual strategic planning process sounds like a lot. Um, and, and, and it's a lot. Um, but, um, but really for us, you know, what it meant was, it was sort of um, at least twofold. One is uh, that planning process has kept us out of um, the trap of setting kind of short-term goals. So I want to be able to see my patient um, who's two hours away. And so let's set up um, you know, the infrastructure to do that and think about workflows. Okay, I did that, and now I don't know what to do next. Or, um, or how to scale that, or what my long-term vision really is. Or I think you know, the other side of that spectrum is sometimes um, organizations say, we want a statewide telehealth network. That's our five-year vision. And then don't really have a plan to get there. So I think that you, it's um, easy to get stuck in both of those places. And I think that's where we're coming together annually and saying, okay, what are short, medium, and long-term goals? And while we established a five-year vision and a 10-year vision, um, coming together annually forces us to have the stepwise process of, of achieving that vision. I think um, it also has, kept us up to date in this very rapidly changing environment um, that is telehealth. I think the things that we thought were possible for our patients um, five years ago are different from the things that are possible today and are gonna be different from the things that are possible in five years or even less. And as a clinician, what I want is the most effective care for my patient. Um, it's made me stop, take a step back and say, you know, instead of um, delivering my care in three month intervals for 15 minutes at a time, and that's how I organize how I care for my patient um, and, and how I deliver interventions in a certain disease process. Instead, what if I said, I just want one bit of information every day. If I had one bit of information every day, how would I more effectively take care of my patient? And, and this technology has enabled us to have one bit of information every single day if we want um, and, and really rapidly change how we manage patients. Um, I think that the process has also enabled us to really have a bi-directional relationship with a lot of technology vendors. Um, and that was, for me as a clinician, an unexpected um, kind of perk of, of really thinking about what the next um, stage in development should be and thinking ahead is that that's that's what the industry does it pushes us forward it's always thinking about the next thing um, and by being able to sit down and saying right I really like the 2019 Converge to Accelerate conference is brought to you by IEEE the world's largest technical professional organization for the advancement of technology Bollinger Ingelheim passionately working to improve healthcare NASCO Advancing Digital Health Together, IPSI US, the Association of Independent Workers, for one, for all. Partners in Digital Health, publishers of the forward-reaching blockchain in healthcare today and telehealth and medicine today. Special consideration to iWorker Innovations, taking the independent workforce to new heights. Connected Health Conference, designing for healthy habits and better outcomes. Haven Health Solutions, providing true blockchain transactional interoperability. Special thanks to Seaport World Trade Center for hosting us. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away.